Let's come back to this idea of carrier-mediated transport. Again, this is something that's usually for larger molecules, molecules that are not able to diffuse directly across the plasma membrane. So they need some assistance. This works well for things like amino acids or glucose or other sorts of things that, that might diffuse in from the bloodstream. Okay, so in these cases, there is a carrier protein within the plasma membrane that's involved in the transport. And these carrier proteins, um, because they are physical structures and they have kind of like a receiving port that they take molecules in at, this means that they have a limit in terms of how much they can transport. They can generally only do one or two molecules at a time. And that's it. So this means that there is a limit on the rate of transport for specific things coming into the cell or moving out of the cell. The rate of transport correlates to some degree with concentration of the molecule. So for example, with glucose, if we have just a tiny bit of glucose available outside of the cell, um, and then if we start to increase how much glucose is outside of the cell, the rate of transport is going to increase a little bit. But at some point, we're going to reach some po point that's called saturation, where the carrier protein just can't move any more quickly than it already is. So carrier proteins can become saturated, which means they're working the best they can, um, just can't speed up the rate anymore. Carrier proteins are specific. They they don't carry just anything. It has to be something specific that they can recognize and bind to. Some carrier proteins move just one type of molecule, so either X or Y. Other carrier proteins um, can recognize a subset of molecules, so both X and Y could potentially be transported by the carrier protein. And depending on how specific the carrier protein is, that will, involve, that will influence what is the maximum rate of transportation. So it kind of makes sense. Looking at glucose specifically, this is one that will be definitely relevant to us. We'll be looking at this a couple of t points throughout the semester. Carrier proteins for glucose are embedded in the membranes and they're usually designated, if we're talking about these carrier proteins, they're usually designated with a GLUT, GLUT, followed by some type of number. You don't need to memorize these numbers, but I'd like you to know that GLUT is referring to a transport protein, a carrier protein for glucose. And in the case of glucose carrier proteins, what happens is there are two binding sites for glucose. So generally there will be two molecules transported at a time. And the amazing thing with these transport carriers is that they, they can be stored inside of the cell and they can then be inserted into the membrane kind of on an as-needed basis. And the way that they're generally kept when they're not needed is in vesicle form. So here's a vesicle, it's got a number of carrier proteins embedded in it. And then what happens is when this cell is stimulated, then um, this vesicle will fuse with the membrane in order to insert those carrier proteins. So now this cell would be ready to take up glucose. So this is going to tie in, we'll see this in more detail later when we learn about insulin a little bit more later on. Um, insulin is something that can trigger this fusion to take place with the plasma membrane.